Hello everyone, welcome to Universal Videos Workshop. We'll start off with an introduction of our amazing guest. We will then take the rest of the time for the guests to share their experience and advice. We will have 10 minutes for Q&A at the end of guest session. This and all workshops are recorded and will be released on YouTube for those who are unable to attend live, but would still appreciate getting this information and getting to know our amazing guest. Next up, we'll start with introduction. Again, welcome to Universal Vidya Workshop Introduction. Our guest today is Mr. Oscar Kapil. His mission has become to protect and empower local businesses with best business solutions on small business budget. He looks forward to serving this community with his virtual community. Contact him if you'd like to talk or learn more about him and his journey. On this page, which will be linked on the description of the YouTube video, you could find the social media and contact info which, where you could reach him. Please follow us. You can contact us by emailing to team at universalvidya.org for further inquiries. Now, we would have our guest take over with his presentation. Thanks so much. I, and, and still, as many times as I met you, I'm so impressed that a person this young has their life so well put together and it, it's great to see it makes me really happy to see that so let me get my presentation together all right are we seeing the slide yes i would like to introduce myself i'm oscar capel i was born in argentina came to this country when i was two years old my father was a dental technician and i followed in his footsteps became a dental technician myself after 30 years worked my way up into management and my job took me out to costa rica which was a fantastic thing to do. Um, getting paid New York dollars in, uh, in Central America, that was really good. So ran a 97 person lab, everything was good. And hopefully that was going to be the end of the story. But unfortunately, as 40 million people found out during COVID, I found out several years before that, that a job is a great way to start, but not that much security because the place I was working for went bankrupt. So I found myself without a job and without an industry because everything was being outsourced. One of the reasons that we were in Costa Rica. So I had to retool my life. I had to see what else I could do because like I said, there was not any dental technician job available in my area. So I became a certified identity theft risk management specialist. I was able to put on seminars at, uh, at my local libraries. I was uh, asked to do an interview on TV about uh, cybersecurity, and that went really well also. But then COVID hit, and I was not able to do anything live anymore. But I did join Legal Shield because Legal Shield has not only legal, but they have identity theft protection, <clears throat> and it's a great fit for what I do. One of the things that we're looking at now in the, in the um, landscape of what's going on past COVID a lot of businesses are looking to attract people and help them with employee benefits. And we have one of those packages available. So social economic landscape has changed and we were struggling as, a, as employees. Legal service became very, very important for a lot of people very, very quickly. So these estate planning, landlord, tenant, family, or consumer finance are the reasons to use legal services every day. People thinking, no, oh, I don't need a lawyer. I don't use a lawyer often. Every time we sign a contract that somebody else wrote, we're using a lawyer. Every time you accept anything on, on the internet, you hit that agree, that is a contract. That should be actually written out and sent to your lawyer to have everything in there checked before you do that, I agree. So the legal needs among millennials and Gen Zs soared in 2021. And I thought that was a little odd that Gen Z was actually much more receptive to legal advice rather than, than millennials. And then pretty much figured out that's because Gen Zs have grown up with a device in their hand. So disruptive marketing, which is what we do, makes it simpler, easier, and more affordable to have access to a law firm, not just you know any old lawyer, but an entire law firm. So Here's the problem with, with legal service. It's been expensive, it's been unresponsive, it's been unaccountable. You, What lawyer do you need to call when you have a problem? Every problem 
has a different type of lawyer. Lawyers are like doctors, they specialize. So you wouldn't get a divorce lawyer for a consumer issue. You'd get a consumer issue lawyer. So disruptive marketing, which is what we do, as I said, puts this app in our hand and we are able to contact our law firm with any problem we have and get resolutions. Again, it's not an 1-800 lawyer that somebody's gonna pick up the phone, you don't know who they are. Legal Shield works with one law firm per state. I am an associate with them, I'm not a lawyer, but I give people access to the law firm. New York, it's Felmer, Kramer, and Monaco. They've been in business for many, many years, and it's a huge law firm. This is, this is the way I used the law firm. I had my car fixed by Toyota. Two years later, the part went bad. I went to get it fixed, and they charged me 497 because I was out of warranty. And I didn't believe that that specific thing that went wrong should be changed every year. So I had my law firm write them a what I call a motivational letter. And guess what? I got my money back with a little bit of interest. So that's how you use a lawyer every day when you have a consumer issue. The other thing is wills, wills, living wills, healthcare power of attorney, something everyone should have done. It's the last love letter you write to your family. Most people do not do it because they don't know the cost involved and they don't know how to do it. Legal Shield has made it very, very simple. It's eight pages, very easy to fill out. That goes to the law firm. The law firm will call you back with any questions. You get your will, living will, healthcare power of attorney sent back to you, get it done, no extra charge. Here's another problem. We Every once in a while, we have this type of problem. What do you normally do with that? What we do is we hit a button, submits the traffic ticket to the law firm. They will let you know how, what's the best way to fight the ticket. The law firm is available 24-7, 365. That is something no other um, service does that, that I know of. Archie Williams spent 39 years of his life in prison for a crime he did not commit because he did not get good legal representation. Where were you 38 and 39 years ago? That All of that part of your life would have been taken away um, if you were in his shoes. So that's a legal part. The other thing is identity theft. Identity theft, as I said, is a huge problem. When we had the, the data breach with Equifax, they said victims will be looking over their shoulders for the rest of their lives. That was 147 million people that were affected. Now we have over 30 billion people affected by data breaches, and it's going on every day. Morgan Wright, the U.S. Department senior anti-terrorism advisor, who was asked, what do you do if your identity is stolen? And I almost fell off my chair when he said I use a company called ID Shield because they have actual investigators, and that makes the difference. A licensed investigator able to take over your case and make sure that the, they, they will do whatever it takes, as long as it takes, to resolve the problem. Another thing ID Shield does, it gives you sex uh, sex offenders that are living in your area. You have children, you need to know where they are and how close they are to you. Peace of mind and protection, how much does it cost? That's the first question. Individuals, um, families, and businesses, the prices are there. I'll show you one, $29.95 for Legal Shield for the family. And if you see on the right, it says member perks. There are a lot of companies that give discounts because we provide that service. So member perks, Horizon, 8% off because that's what they give me. So I get $32.54 back. I pay $29 to protect the family. I get $32 back. I basically get the, the service for free. Reputation management is the next thing we're doing. What is What does your online footprint look like? Things are, that you've put on the internet are going to live there forever. What we do is a privacy, um, the reputation defender put all of your social media in there, let the AI scan it for you and they'll let you know what's out there. For example, these pictures I posted in 1985 were fine, but in today's world, I might not wanna post that picture. So the AI will check all your pictures and let you know if there's anything there that should be taken away. So old social media posts are there to haunt you. Uh, people are being canceled for something they wrote on Twitter five years ago. So financial. How, do, how does your financial get evaluated? All of these things, they're looking at your credit score, they're looking at your, at your reputation. Your online footprint, there's a data broker removal tool, which is important. Go there and get all of your data removed that has been sold everywhere. 
what I do is I run people with my certified identity theft. Um, I run people through a dark web scanner and see what their businesses look like if they've been infected, if they've had data breaches. So that is a free service that I provide for everybody. The other thing I do with Legal Shield and ID Shield is a portion of every sale goes to Operation Underground Railroad to stop child sex trafficking in the US and around the world. So we do this every year. We have a big rally and it's all across the nation, all across the world, one single day, everybody getting together. Your next step, have a call. Give me a call. Let's have a discussion. Let's see if, if this is something that you would be interested in doing as, as income producing or to protect your family and your business. My information is here and I will stop sharing now and we will get to questions and answers. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Um, I will start with my first question. What is a typical day in your career? It depends on the day. Since I, I work for myself and my, my hours are, are very, very flexible, um, certain days I'm doing network meetings. And certain days I'm, I'm helping, um, helping clients with their problems, any questions they have, what they need to do next. Um, other days I'm doing uh, broadcast shows with Phil Reed, like Wednesdays we do Focus on You with Phil Reed. So my day is broken up depending on what I need to do. It also gives me time to volunteer, like I said, with, uh, with Operation Underground Railroad. And I also volunteer on the weekends with um, the Fuller Center for, for um, Building. What, what I've done since September 1st is help rebuild Mamaroneck after the floods. We had 500 families that were displaced. So, you know, my day changes depending on what needs to be done, but my focus is not so much on making money, but making a difference in the community. That is, that's my focus. That sounds great. So what's the biggest challenges that you face in your industry? The biggest challenge I face in my industry is, is getting the information out there of how bad, first of all, identity theft is. Um, people think it's their credit card. If you see anybody advertising identity theft protection products on TV, it's always financial. It's always money based, but it's, it's, it's your financial, it's social security, it's medical passports, driver's license. Our driver's license is our, is our number one identity card. So to get the information out there to, to, so people can see how bad it is out there, that is, that is a huge challenge. If you could change one thing about the world at large, what would you change? People not being so selfish and look at others because everybody is, every, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people are in the me, 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 give me, give me, give me. And that, you know, when you're not getting, then, then you're anxious because you're not getting. But if you start giving more, you'll get it anyway but you're, you're not in your, in your head. Um, like I said, I volunteer with, with several groups because you know, that's, that, that completes my day is volunteering and, and putting out and, and helping other people. So what mistakes, if any, did you make early or in your career in general? Oh, well, do we have three or four hours for this or is this going to be a short? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Maybe top I think, two. I think mistakes um, is not listening to people that know that have been there and done that, and thinking I can do it on my own. Um, I wish I had, I had read uh, "Think and Grow Rich" and uh, "Rich Dad Poor Dad" way before I did. You know, after I lost my job, to be, you know, more focused on on what to do. And and again, like I said, uh, meeting you, you're you're a young person, you're an entrepreneur. And, and having that, I think, is more important than, than getting that, you know, that, that new degree and that new certification and, and everything else. Is you're, also, you're always chasing the next thing. But are you chasing the next thing for a corporate job that's going to be able to replace you, you know, in a heartbeat? Or are you doing stuff to build your own business up and, and, and have a legacy, something beyond the business? Totally understandable. <laughs> Many students and young professionals had difficulty separating work from life with the rise of virtual learning, work from home, or so on and so forth. So how did you maintain work-life balance in your career? 
Uh, for me, it's easy because, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm working virtually. So, you know, as long as I have uh, access to my phone, I have access to my business. So I don't literally have to be somewhere. But to get the, inf you know, the information that, that I have and, and um, what's the best way to describe it? Um, getting, getting a good system of knowing what you need to do at what time, I think, is really important. Having a having a your your day scheduled out. So, what tools would you probably use most, like Google Calendar or so on, so forth, to organize your day? Right there, there are people that that actually work um, helping people organize. I, I highly recommend that. If if anybody wants to call me, I know a couple of people that can that can help you with that. But literally having not only your digital um, calendar, but also having a physical one because i don't try right now i'm i'm running i'm running wi-fi off of my phone because my internet's not working at home so if i was relying on my internet to find my calendar i wouldn't have it you know you need the phone so getting your you know getting your your day planned ahead of time i think it's important there's a great book um seven levels of communication where he says he has his entire week's wardrobe already set up. So he knows what he's gonna wear Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So that's something that's out of your head. Now you have time to think of something else. So getting your day together the night before, um, having your schedule ready and looking it over the night before. So, you know, there's no surprises in the morning, I think is, is huge. Totally agree. What is one thing that every person should do for their career start their own business like i said i found out you know after 30 plus years of working for someone else that if you're you are a few paychecks away from from living out in the street if you don't build something on your own that can't be taken away from you so i think that is that is the number one thing that, that i would say doesn't matter what you do just get that side hustle going and you know but i believe um um bob proctor says you know you put away 20 dollars a week starting at 20 years old by the time you retire you have millions so you know it starts something start somewhere and and work it day by day so do you think with your ideology i kind of agree but i do want to ask this follow-up question which is if everyone is an entrepreneur or a business um leader but every entrepreneur need workers for them so how do you think the um wouldn't there be a decay in um entrepreneurship or growth of an organization that that in a perfect world that would be true but you probably know you know you're an entrepreneur um and entrepreneurs are basically a, a like a subset not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur you know, but then again, not everybody wants to save money when they're 20 years old, ready for retirement. So entrepreneurism, is, it's the end. And, and again, being an entrepreneur, it's somebody said, is like jumping off a cliff and trying to grow wings on the way down. It is not easy. It is not for everybody. Um, there's a lot of pitfalls. And if you're doing it on your own without help, it's it's a huge problem. Like 95 percent of businesses that start up fail within the first five years. So it's not easy. You need you need to grow a thicker skin and a, and a different mindset to be an entrepreneur but everyone should do something to build wealth for the future that's not depending on a job this is my personal opinion not to say something as a stereotype but i feel like Technically speaking, aren't all of us on earth entrepreneurs at the end of the day because we're all earning money for our services or products we provide to this society? Since doctors do earn money from their work or lawyers and so on and so forth, every career at the end of the day works with money just like entrepreneurs. And we're all trying to sell what we do for service. So I think the, the best way to describe that would be from Robert Kiyosaki's book, um, the, uh, the, I forgot the exact same, uh, the exact title of it. Don't get old. It's, it's awful. Um, it's uh, the, oh man, I can't remember, but basically 
there's a difference between being an entrepreneur and trading hours for dollars. So he says you can be, you know, you can you can own a business, like let's say it's a bagel store, and you're the only one that knows how to make the bagels. So you're still an entrepreneur, but your business owns you like a job because you're trading hours for dollars. What he says is you need to learn cash flow quadrant. That's the that's the one. Um, you need to learn how to make money work for you either as a business with employees or as an investor and get money you know get your money being chased by other money so yes everyone earns a living um my next question is what is one thing you wish you had known when you were a teenager um as a teenager you pretty much think you're going to live forever and you do not plan ahead that's everyone but you because you know better but um as a teenager i i think i was i i would work next door to a financial planner and he he started me on a savings program when i was 18 years old and when i was 20 years old i took that money out to buy a car so i stopped putting money in and i'm looking back now i said if i would have invested you know had that that money still going in there there would be according to what uh, i've learned several million dollars in that account so that is a huge mistake not listening to people that are older than you that have been there like i said have been there done that um you know if you're going to walk across a minefield you got to make sure you walk across behind someone that's been there and knows where to step and where not to step i think you know the the younger you are the um the more you think you know everything until you realize too late that you didn't. Sounds perfect, I guess. It's understandable. Which has been more valuable in your career success, your education or your experience? A little of both. You need some education to to advance the career. So you can't say, I don't need education. That's, you know, that's that. You need to read a label, you know, so you need education. But um, there's education to advance your career, and then there's education just for education's sake. You know, I, I love studying music, so I get educated on music and different types of music and everything. It has nothing to do with my career, but that's part of education that I that I like to learn. But um, again, when when I was in uh, when I was in high school, they said, "Do you want to?" Uh, chemistry, physics, and geometry. And I said, no, I want uh, two periods of shop. And that education helped me because I'm, I'm doing, I sent you a picture earlier of the work I'm doing in the house. So it helped me uh, volunteer with, uh, with the Fuller Center to help rebuild houses. So find education that will further your life, not education just for education's sake. Totally understandable. And this one, I really do mean it because my whole purpose of Universal Video was to teach life skills and education that's purposeful and useful for the youth. So now to the next question, which is, what is one thing every person should do for their personal fulfillment? That That's a great question for personal fulfillment. Uh, one thing is keep a gratitude journal. The universe likes when you're grateful for what you have and you get more. Um, people should really, really, you know, find out what their purpose is here on them. We're, we're dancing on this little rock for a hundred years. You know, it's been, it's been around for billions. So they say dogs die after 12 years because they've already learned how to love everybody in those 12 years and that, you know, they can, they can go back. But um, yeah, it's, it's, you're just learning why you're here and what your purpose is in life and and how to become a better human being and i think number one is not judge other people because you don't know what they've been through you don't know their story when you're when you meet them so you can't judge someone until you know, like they said you, you walk in their shoes so we judge people based on on what we've gone through and not everybody's gone through the same thing so judging people is is I think the number one problem we, we have. Definitely agree with that. So what steps do we as youth 
need to take to get where you are as far as career wise personal wise mentally everything i i think we'll we'll go back to that question of education find out how wealth is created find out how the world works find out you know who and and somebody said once um when you're looking at, at politics it's like if you go to mcdonald's and you're not happy with something you want to see the manager it's like that the manager is not the franchise or the franchise owner so in politics you're only going to see what um what you're seeing in politics you don't see who's above the politicians and in this country unfortunately it's big business so the oligarchs will run um the government you know and we need as as people to come together again look at each other for for resources and take back power from a, a government that's just out there to uh basically to enrich the big companies that fund their campaigns my opinion <laughs> and again but then you know i, I have uh, adhd so I, I a lot of things come together that someone that just has a normal straight way of thinking does it so i've you know seen different things and I, and i go off in different directions and listen to a lot of people that other people say you know why are you listening to that person he's a comedian i'm like but sometimes comedians are are making fun of things that are happening in front of our eyes but we don't realize it so seeing comedians and seeing what they they think is funny opens you up to what is really going on so what advice would you give to aspiring career professionals the youth in general number one find a mentor find again find that person that's been there done that and and cut years off of your learning curve find a good mentor that that will help you advance your career whatever your career is that's wonderful i definitely agree with that and if there's one thing we could all leave this workshop with what would it be i think it would be get the right education um think of other people first and just that like my mother used to say you're going to be dead a lot longer than you're alive so have fun while you're alive wow that's pretty deep <laughs> that's pretty deep yeah and I, I mean, the, the more we take ourselves you know seriously that you know the more we like you know study our belly buttons and and get into our own little problems it's like just you know let it go just just move on um one thing i recommend is uh eckhart tolle has a great book uh the power of now excellent book and again you know that is part of the way that that i'm thinking is through years of reading and, and educating myself on on how life works and eckhart tolle's um the power of now is, is a fantastic book for that that sounds perfect and to end um to end this uh, Q&A, I would just say, as advice to reiterate what Mr. Oscar Capel said, reading books is the best way to gain knowledge, but also find mentors or people that educate you, not teach you. Two different th things. Personally, I'm an aspiring educator. I want to be known as educator rather than a teacher, if that makes any sense. But that's my in, intake on this. Thanks for showing up. I truly appreciate everyone that joined today live and to everyone that will be joining via YouTube. Have a great day.